Can anyone live in a car? Well, when you apply for a job, there's usually job requirements, a certain amount of education, a certain amount of work experience, things that you need to have in order to be able to obtain a job. But like some jobs, there's really no previous experience needed. What would I say when asked about can anyone live in a car? Since I've lived in a car for three years, I have some experience. So at first thought, you say, oh, come on, anyone can live in a car. And it is true. Look, it's a basic primitive life and just about anyone can live in a car. But I want to share with you some key things that you should consider uh, that almost are a requirement that you live in a car. Number one is a deal breaker right off the door. You have to have an active driver's license, a driver's license that's not suspended, that is in good standing uh, in whatever uh, state or country you're going to live. So uh, it seems like a stupid thing, but it's something that you have to consider. Do you have a DWI or are you, is your driver's license revoked and you can't live in your car? So right there, it's like process of elimination. Next is you have to have car insurance. Okay. Seems like another stupid thing, but by the law, if you don't have driver's insurance, you cannot drive. So the two things off the door with regards to can anyone live in their car? No, no. If you don't have a driver's license and if you don't have a driver's insurance, you can't live in your car. All right. You say, all right, you got me. That was kind of stupid, but you're right. Okay. The next thing that's required Okay, is a certain amount of money. Okay, I've seen videos where people say they're living in their car for two hundred fifty dollars a month or uh, five hundred thousand dollars a month. You know, look, I'm not going to get into that debate because you know you could try to live destitute, dead broke, from meal to meal, or beg for food on the corner. There's so many different ways to live in life. My general rule is I tell people. Uh, you want around $2,000 per month in income and $2,000 in a savings account. Why? Because that's about $15 an hour. And if you cannot make $15 an hour, you should not be on the road because it's a little bit more dangerous when you don't have a level of stability that money gives you. Um, again, you can make $15 an hour doing DoorDash uh, very easily. So... Uh, it's something that you need to consider at least that it kind of is required, you know, you need gas, you know, you need to do the different things that you need to do. So the other thing that's required is an adaptive mind, you know, because things don't always work out at the campground where you're stealth parking, maybe, maybe there's an issue uh, with the gyms. Like recently, uh, it's been very tough with the coronavirus. Certain states closed down their gyms. Well, all the states closed down their gyms at one point. Now certain states are open. Certain campgrounds are open, but not all. So you don't have a fixed routine. You don't have a fixed routine. People with high anxiety, uh, depression, very easily stressed. And I could get there at times, even myself, but I, I'm adaptive. And, and but people with high anxiety, particular people with OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, when you throw off something in their routine and they have to adapt, they get very angry, upset, and they lash out. Know yourself. So what is required to live in your car? An adaptive mind, meaning if something changes within your routine, you will accept it and you will adapt. If you know you need stability in a fixed routine because of your mental issues or whatever, you're better off renting a room, being in an apartment, or living with family. My opinion. The other thing that's required after the mental stability is the physical stability. Meaning that, obviously, look, if you uh, break your leg, God forbid, on the road, or if you get seriously hurt, uh, living in your car, rolling around your car at night, starting it, uh, dealing with extreme temperature. If you're really sick, uh, uh, you know, again, broke leg, a high fever, something like that, it's not feasible. Uh, those are the worst times to live in your car when you're sick, hurting, or extreme temperature. So, especially with regards to physically sick, do you have the capacity, uh, money wise and every other wise, to go to a hotel, to rent a, a short term Airbnb, or, uh, you know, 
I don't know, you know, if there's certain physical issues that may come up uh, if you were disabled or if you got hurt that you wouldn't even be able to live in your car even if you wanted to. So just something to give thought that at any time, any of us, including me, it's something I do think about. If you slip and fall and you break your leg or something and you have to do months of rehab, what's your exit strategy? What's your exit strategy? Because what is required to live in your car is a physical well-being that allows you to be independent, okay? This is an independent, uh, free living lifestyle. But to have that, you need your physical health. And some of that's the grace of God, but some of that is, you know, anything can happen at any time. So there are some things that are required to live in a car. Uh, again, for legal compliance with the government, a driver's license, driver's insurance. For the ability to execute it, you need a certain amount of money. You need your mental health, an adaptive mind. You need physical health, the wherewithal to go in and out of a car and to drive it, etc. And I think, you know, the last thing I would say is required is some type of game plan, okay? You know, like, oh, I'm going to work nights as a security guard, and during the day, I'm going to go to a public park and park and sleep there. Or, uh, you know, I'm going to work during the day, and I'm going to go to BLM land, Bureau of Land Management, or uh, wherever. Or you're going to boondock at a friend's house, or Whatever strategy, I would say have your first three to six months planned out on where you're going to park. You researched Thousand Trails. You saw where you can tent camp for three months if you change every four days to different campgrounds. You know, do some test runs. Do some dry runs. You know, plan out. It's like moving. You know, yeah, you can just <clears throat> pack your bags and move, but it's going to be harder. It's going to be harder. So try to, like, be proactive and visit and, and try and experiment and don't over invest. Don't over commit. Don't buy a brand new vehicle or a brand new RV or some, or a brand new van until you kind of know if this lifestyle works for you. Because for most people, for 99% of society living full-time in their vehicle, whether it's car, van, or even RV, it does not work long-term. Uh, within eight months, they're done. Only 1% of society consistently lives full-time as a nomad. So, you know, it's something you have to give thought to uh, and that you have to have an exit strategy. Again, exit strategy, very big. Uh, you have to have a savings account. You have to, you know, because again, if you're going to get off the road and you're going to go back into an apartment, rent a room or buy a house, whatever it is, you know, that initial investment of getting back into a rental, you need first month security deposit, last month security deposit. If you're going to buy another house, you need a certain amount of money down. So think about what it's going to take, not only if you get into car living, but if you decide to get out, your exit strategy. It's very important in life. I think I did a video about last night about when you get into something, you have to know what's the steps required to get out of it. Why? Because you never want to get stuck and be vulnerable in something and then you get screwed. Okay. So those are some lessons, some insights that I think are very uh, practical, uh, honest and fair and come from experience and observation. So if you appreciate that, I appreciate if you click the thumbs up. Also, I want to thank you to all my members. You could click that blue membership uh, button, join button. And every night I go live on this uh, channel. You can join the live streams if you're a member. And uh, that's it, guys. See you in the next video. Peace and love. Stay positive.